Hi there, everybody, and welcome to podcast number one for Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. I'm Mr. Galladay, and today we have the exciting topic of uh, hypotheses and experiments. Yes, I know this is the lecture that you've all been waiting for. Not really? Well, okay, maybe not. Uh, nothing is going to explode. There won't be any blood squirting or anything really exciting like that. But this is important stuff that we want to get through, and I promise to uh, go through this stuff just as quickly and painlessly as possible so that we can get on to some more uh, exciting stuff next time. Okay, a uh, quick piece of information before we get started. Uh, don't forget that as we go through these vodcasts, uh, you can use the pause, rewind buttons uh, to go back if you miss anything or if you need a little more time, uh, that is there for you to use. Uh, I'm, for the first couple of lectures, I'll be showing you how to set up the table of contents, but after that, uh, I'm just gonna assume that you know how to do that and, and I'll just remind you and move on. Um, at this point in time, this is what your table of contents should look like. We've got page, uh, pages one and two. We have some notes on already. Uh, and so we're going to be adding today uh, information on page three. This, of course, will go on the right-hand side. This will be on hypotheses and experiments. Uh, so don't forget to number your pages, 3R and 3L. Uh, also include a date and a title, which would be hypotheses and experiments. Okay, here we go. First, we'll start off with a definition. Um, a hypothesis is a proposed explanation. Now, a lot of times in junior high, you get a slightly different uh, version of this, or you get a slightly different definition. Um, be sure that you understand that a hypothesis is not an educated guess. A hypothesis is actually a proposed explanation. It's something that we're, uh, that we're thinking explains some set of observations. Um, so in, in this case, you must have observed something first, uh, and now what we're doing is we're trying to explain why that particular set of uh, that, that particular thing happened. Okay, uh, it's not a simple prediction about the outcome of an experiment. Let me give you a quick little example to explain what I mean. Uh, imagine this uh, snappy fellow here, uh, who has arms long enough to drag on the ground, uh, and as you'll notice. Uh, up in his uh, right hand, he's or left hand actually for his left hand, uh, he's holding a, a, a red colored ball. Okay, um, and then when he releases the ball, what happens? Well, uh, it falls to the ground just as you would expect. Pretty nifty special effects, huh? Let's see that one more time. Okay, he's got the ball and then he releases it and it falls. Okay, so there's our observation. Every time he releases the ball, it falls to the ground, right? I let go of the ball, falls to the ground. Let go of the ball, falls to the ground, okay? Well, a hypothesis, it would not be, um, would not be a simple prediction, right? Um, a prediction would be something like, well, if I release the ball, if I drop the ball, if I let go of it, it's going to fall to the ground. That's a prediction, but that doesn't explain. Uh, that doesn't give us any explanation for why the ball is falling. Uh, a hypothesis is that uh, when I release a ball, it falls to the ground because of the gravitational force. Okay, this because statement here is what makes it a hypothesis. Okay, not the if and then. Okay, this is just simply a prediction, but the hypothesis has some explanation that we can test. Okay, so here's an, another example of that. Uh, we have these two people here who don't look very happy and they are confronted by a giant spider. Uh, and the gentleman says, well, I've narrowed it to two hypotheses, either it grew or we shrunk. Um, I'll leave you with that and let you think of some ways that maybe he could test that hypothesis. How could he find out which one of those it is? Um, give you a hint, there's no, nothing drawn in the background of this picture uh, to give us any other clues. Okay, so uh, next thing we want to look at, that's a, a hypothesis, so the next thing that we want to look at is um, something about what an experiment is. 
Now, I don't know about you guys, but uh, when I was uh, a, a young teenager growing up and I heard the word experiment, uh, the image that came to my mind was something like this, right? Dr. Frankenstein working in his laboratory. Uh, he's got, you know, a brain floating around in some jar of something. There's beakers bubbling and there's lightning bolt things happening and all kinds of cool, groovy stuff like that going on. Okay, well, that's not necessarily what makes an experiment. Um, all an experiment really is, is just a simple plan for making observations under controlled conditions. Um, we use those observations, of course, to answer some kind of a question. So whether or not uh, Dr. Frankenstein's stuff uh, qualifies for an experiment or not, I don't know. Nope, don't get mad, just go away. Okay, uh, so that's what that's our definition of an experiment. So the next thing that we want to consider is what would make a good experiment. Okay, well we have uh, four or five different criteria that we can look at that, that would make a good experiment. First thing would be, of course, to have a well-defined question. Uh, if you ask a sloppy question, you'll probably get a sloppy answer, right? We want to know specifically what it is that we want to learn. Second thing to know is what is it that we're going to measure? What is it that we're going to count? Uh, what is it that we're going to um, observe as the result of this experiment? What's our, uh, in other words, what's our responding or our dependent variable? What exactly will we, will we be looking at? Third thing to be aware of is what is our uh, manipulated or independent variable? What is it that we're changing uh, in the experiment? Um, what is it that we're varying? And the fourth thing, of course, is to eliminate all other variables. We want to think about, well, what other, possible, what other possible things could happen that would mess up our results? What other kinds of things could, uh, could cause some, uh, some results to look like one, uh, one outcome when actually it would be something different? So we want to be sure that everything is controlled. And then the last thing to consider is to be sure that we have large enough numbers to be believable. Uh, if you're only going to build one monster and that's your experiment, then uh, the results might be too, uh, might not be too believable. If you built a hundred monsters, uh, then that might be a more repeatable result or give you more believable results. Something that Dr. Frankenstein never considered, I'm sure. Okay, so this is an example that we talked about the other day in class. We, we looked at these two groups of plants. We said that one was grown with fertilizer A, one was grown with fertilizer B. Uh, some things to think about is if you were designing an experiment, what sorts of things would you do uh, to make sure that it was a good experiment? What sorts of things would you have to control? What sorts of things would you uh, measure? What sorts of things would you change uh, between these two groups? Okay, and at this point we're nearly done, uh, and so the thing that I would like you to do to continue this uh, on the left side, okay, I've just given you some input for the right side. Uh, on the left side, what I'd like you to do is first of all just write a short little paragraph about um, any previous definitions of, of a hypothesis that you might have learned, um, and what's different between what I've just told you about and, and the, your previous understanding of a hypothesis, okay? Um, the definition I've given you today is a much better definition, much closer to uh, definitions that are, are, are used in a, in a college type of course. Okay, so how is that different from what you've learned in junior high or in, in some earlier science course? The second thing I'd like you to do is to make a little sketch, uh, write a couple sentences to design an experiment. What would you do to compare two different fertilizers? Um, all of those, those five considerations that I told you earlier, uh, all of those you should consider in, in your design, okay? Um, what are the things that, uh, what's, the, what's exactly the question that you're asking? Uh, what is exactly the, um, the thing that you're going to be measuring? What is exactly the thing that, that you would be uh, varying? What's your responding variable? What, what is your manipulated variable? What sorts of things are you holding constant? Uh, and how are you able to be sure that you um, have enough numbers to, to be confident in your results? Okay, that's going to do it for this vodcast. This is the end of vodcast one. 
Uh, I'm Mr. Galladay for Desert Ridge High School, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.